This is Kay Tobin Lehusen. She's one of the first openly gay photojournalists who pioneered LGBT movements as early as the 1950s. Lehusen, along with her lifetime partner Barbara Giddings, is responsible for some of the most notable lesbian publications, including the latter. It was Lehusen's dedication to documenting their history that gathered attention. Wherever there was a demonstration, Lehusen would follow with her camera at hand. The photo I've chosen reflects an issue that is still relevant to the LGBT community today. The year was 1965, and change was not only expected, the people demanded it. It was a time when minorities were marching to challenge society for equality among the masses. Lehusen captured this photo of Giddings during a march on the White House in October, where more than 45 protested the discrimination of employment against gay men and women. In her own words, Lehusen described that the commission had failed them. Their only choice was to stage a public demonstration and call attention to the problem. Though many of the protesters followed a strict conservative dress code, they feared that onlookers would get violent with them or verbally assault them. There is still a significant minority of Americans who do not benefit from the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness Barbara, that are guaranteed there, you are. Us. there I am handing out leaflets, and the drill was you smile and you smile and you hand out to everyone, whether they take it or not. So there I am handing out leaflets. What, were you scared? It was scary because there were so few of us who could take the risk of being so public. For example, um, what if my boss sees me on the six o'clock news and fires me? Or what if my picture appears on the front page of my parents' hometown newspaper and causes grief or shockwaves in the town? And uh, what if some bystander starts throwing insults at us or worse, bricks or stones? Uh, and what is the government going to do with all those photographs and tape recordings that they're taking of us? Later, Lehusen amassed and published her rally photos in the latter and even contributed to a Manhattan newspaper, Gay News Weekly. Lehusen's involvement went beyond photographing these protests. Her work cataloged and contributed to the cause. Her efforts as a photojournalist provided historical evidence of the LGBT movement from the 60s and onward. In an interview, Lehusen recalled, I wanted to show our great diversity and to give viewers someone they could identify with, some positive role models. After all, role models were badly needed in the 1960s, when most gay people were afraid to be photographed. The riots were a flashpoint in the gay rights movement and inspired gay people to get further organized and to step up their efforts to improve the lives of their minority. Early picketers inspired gay people to go a step further and fight back at Stonewall. Some participants were fearful, some were proud. Others were simply marching in the belief that they had to come out if things were going to change. Lahusen and Giddings would go on to become leaders in the movement and her photography proved to be powerful. It gave the LGBT community recognition and representation in mainstream media. What's more, her contribution left a footprint in gay history. Every step of the way, Lehusen was determined to archive the movement and become visible to the public. She and Barbara would participate in rallies every Independence Day called Annual Reminders. Then, in 1970, Lehusen co-founded the Gay Activist Alliance just months after the Stonewall Raid. And in 1972, she published a book called The Gay Crusaders, due to the lack of positive information on homosexuality in libraries. Without her efforts to document and inform, those in the LGBT community may not have felt comfortable coming out to fight for their rights. Take, for instance, the 1993 March on Washington, where an estimated one million protesters participated for lesbian, gay, and by equal rights and liberation. This is one of the largest marches organized by the LGBT, which is a drastic increase in numbers compared to the rally in 1965. 
Without fail, the LGBT community continues to fight for equality. This week, the Supreme Court will decide if federal law should protect gay and transgender employees from discrimination in the workplace. It is currently Gay History Month, and despite how much has progressed since Lahuzen first photographed the White House march, we are still fighting for the same cause. Personally, I am thankful for the work that Lahuzen painstakingly collected over the years. Many of the LGBT lived in fear during the 1950s and 60s, and yet Lahuzen encouraged our community to be seen. In fact, prior to joining the latter, the front covers were most exclusively illustrated. But it was Lahuzen's influence that inspired women to pose for the cover, which resulted in quite a lengthy waitlist. Lahuzen risked everything to work under gay publications, and yet with each protest she faced potential incarceration. Her bravery is evident, especially in this particular photograph, because she took her passion and her determination directly to the White House. No matter the consequences, Lahuzen photographed and documented a major turning point in gay history. Although she never received a Pulitzer, her work is preserved in catalog in the New York Public Library archive. Her photography was also proudly memorialized in the library's Love and Resistance Stonewall 50th Anniversary Exhibit. In Lahuzen's hometown of Philadelphia, she is recognized with street dedications, awards, and special tributes. If there's one thing I've learned from her, it's that sometimes you have to go to great lengths to achieve all you can dream. You never quite know the impact of your photography. So document as much as you can, be in the moment, and make history.